So I watched uh, MythVision podcast was interviewing Bernardo Castro. And uh, it was interesting to watch. To be fair to the guy, that's the first time I ever watched any of his stuff. Um, he's a really good guy. I mean, he's, he's a gentleman and he's a, he's a nice guy and a scholar. And he laid out right at the beginning, to be perfectly fair to him, that, that, you know, this stuff is going over my head and this is outside my pay grade. He made that perfectly crystal clear at the beginning. Um, there are two people, not to sidetrack into the same subjects that I'm going to hammer home, but there are two people who I really think are important right now and everybody should be, at least to some degree, listening to their lectures or reading their books. And that is Carlo Rovelli and Bernardo Castro. And to some degree they are both on the same page. Bernard, Car Carlo Rovelli, Jeffrey Williams, turned me on to. This is the greatest physicist alive today, no, hands down, or at least one of the greatest physicists alive today, hands down, and a towering intellect. Debatably, the greatest philosopher alive today at the same time. <laughs> I'm listening to his conversations with people, and he's, he's not, he's really able to talk down to the level where you can follow him and understand what he's talking about. So, you know, I listened to one of his, his classroom lectures, and then you, then you can't, <laughs> and you're like, what on earth? I couldn't, I couldn't understand a word of it. And that's more or less a lot of what was going on with uh, MythVision when he was talking to Bernardo Castro. He, he wasn't really understanding a lot of what Bernardo Castro was saying. So he was asking questions, and, you know, Bernardo Castro was go, kind of chuckling to himself, like, this is the only time he did anything wrong. Okay, so... Let me see if I can parse this out in a way so that it's clear and everyone understands what I'm talking about. Uh, let me start with Carvar Carlo Rovelli. Carvar Carlo Rovelli is the greatest physicist alive today, hands down, or at least one of them. And he has said, quote, what we need is philosophy. Why is that? To make sense of the data. There are things going on in the frontiers of physics that even the physicists themselves do not understand. Now, I've said this before, but I will say it again. When we are talking about philosophy of mind and quantum mechanics, and even philosophy in general, if you are not struggling to understand it, you are not doing it correctly. There is no room at the table at this level for debate me bro clowns. You are either here to grow and learn, or it's time to grow up or go home. <laughs> You're either here to grow and learn, challenge yourself, stretch your mind, rethink things, that you thought were, you had hands down, rethink, reimagine everything, tear down the structures of the thing you have already presupposed, and start afresh. That's called growing up. You know, some of the atheists, you, the first head start was when you deconstructed. Deconstruction is fine. I approve completely of deconstruction. Deconversion, <laughs> that's a step too far. Deconstruction is fine. <laughs> I actually, I don't care. I really honestly don't care what you believe. So, getting back to the issue at hand. So, the greatest physicist of all time has said we need philosophy. To do what? To make sense of the data. To make sense of what is being discovered on the frontiers of physics. Now, Carlo, uh, Bernardo Castro mentioned it to MythVision podcast. I'm pretty sure MythVision didn't know what this meant. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm almost positive. I'm not, I'm not dissing the guy at all. So, no disrespect, MythVision. You know, you're a scholar and a gentleman. No disrespect is intended. I'm just trying to clarify the conversation a little. Um, I, think you, I think you handle your guests really well. Um, I, I approve of how you, uh, how you were with them. So, uh, Bernardo Castro offered that he, he himself has read and listened to Carlo Rovelli and signs off on his interpretation of quantum mechanics, which is... The Relational School of Quantum Mechanics. The Relational School of Quantum Mechanics. The reason why I'm going into this mid-vision, if you're still listening, <laughs> if you're listening, I'm probably not listening, is that the Relational School of Quantum Mechanics is, is basically telling us that the real world both is and isn't there. That's a fact. So the real material world both is and isn't there. See, what mid-vision asked Bernardo Castro, and this was a really intelligent question, this was the right question to ask him, because from the presentation of Bernardo Castro, he calls himself a metaphysical idealist. If you're not catching the nuances, you may think he doesn't think there's a real material world at all. He explains it in his books, and he explains it a lot in his lectures. 
But the explan that's the weakest part of his his um, that's probably the weakest part of his overall presentation. He hasn't really mapped it out so that it makes clear, coherent sense. Almost every every other thing that he talks about in his presentation, he's a hundred percent lucid and like really easy to understand, and he's thought it all through, and it corresponds to empiricism, it corresponds to facts. He's made sure of that. He was trained as a scientist, and it shows. Why? Because his language is precise. So, for example, when, when he said to MythVision, I'm not a materialist at all, materialism a joke, and Myth, MythVision was kind of thrown and said, wait, so you're not a naturalist? Common mistake. He's using materialist in the... the, the the actual precise definition of limited materialism. Then he goes on and says, I am a naturalist. I'm very, and uh, is like, what? Wait, I'm confused. Because these definitions are being used colloquially with vision and imprecisely. There's no way that you could possibly have known that. I'm not saying you've got anything wrong. I'm just saying people on uh, out here in Twitter and YouTube, particularly the atheist community, are throwing around these terms in really imprecise ways. And I'm not going to bother trying to explain them all out right now. But when he says materialism is dead, same thing I've been saying, it's deader than dead. Eliminative materialism is deader than dead, and that's been clear since the dawn of the quantum era. That's a fact. Why? Because according to the physics themselves, the real world both is and isn't there. Isn't there. That's part of it. You have to account for both facts. Both facts are paradoxically true at the exact same time. I don't really want to explain them. The, I'll explain it one more time. Fine, one more time, Greg. Okay, fine. <laughs> Prior to measurement, you have heard of the collapse of the wave function. Prior to measurement, the real material, quote unquote, real material world exists as a wave of probability. A probability has not occurred yet, so it isn't there. Idealism isn't there. But the measurement gets taken. The wave function collapsed, and now it exists as particle. I'm overgeneralizing if you're a Mr. Quantum Mechanics and you're going to ding me. I'm overgeneralizing on purpose. Dumbing it down on purpose so people can clearly understand metaphorically what's going on. Uh, if you're one of these debate me bro clowns, Brenda, <laughs> he doesn't even understand. <laughs> he doesn't even understand what the collapse of the wave function is. It's, I'm talking metaphorically. Brenda, dum dum. <laughs> Brenda, dum dum. Dumb Brenda, dum dum. Um, dum da dum dum dum. So, the, the measurement gets taken. The wave function ostensibly collapsed, metaphorically speaking. Now it exists as what? As particle. Is there? So the real world is both is and isn't there. That's the fact. So, idealism is to some degree true. His form of idealism, metaphysical idealism, is trying to account for both facts at the same time. Does that make sense? He w So, MythVision asks him the most intelligent question he could have possibly been asked. Wait, I've grown up, and he framed it correctly. I've grown up my whole life in this neighborhood, and there's a tree outside my door. And since I was six years old, that tree's been there. That tree is there when I'm asleep. That tree is there when I go to bed at night. So, so he's trying to wrap his brain around what he's being told because what he is being told to some degree is the tree isn't there. Right. It's complicated. <laughs> right. It's complicated. That's why the greatest physicist of all time says we need what? Philosophy. Philosophy. What? To make clear sense of both facts. Yes, you are correct, dude. The tree is there. It has standalone ontology in that sense. We all know this. That's why when I say the real material world has no standalone ontology, I only mean at the quantum level. It has implications from the real world level, but at the quantum level, the real material world has no standalone ontology. Like I said, this is complicated stuff. You cannot do this as a debate me bro clown. If you are trying to understand this stuff, just so you can shut someone down on Twitter and show how smart you are, you're an imbecile. Go home. Grow up or go home. Because that's not how you can, you can't process this information at that level. It's too complicated. So yes, your question was correct. And then his answer is, was not very lucid. He starts going into like the veil of perception and, we're, and it starts sounding really weird. Because he doesn't have a good answer yet. Yet. 
he has a very clear understanding of the fact that the real material world exists. And kind of, sort of, doesn't exist at the same time. Like I said, if you guys want to really dig in and understand this, relational school of quantum mechanics. The relational school of quantum mechanics is probably going to be the dominant interpretation within five years. Carlo Rovelli is the world's preeminent physicist. Bernardo Castro signed off on that, that interpretation while he was talking to MythVision. He said he holds to that interpretation. I figured he would. Why? It's the right one. It's the most plausible. It is the most parsimonious. It is the most logically coherent. The downside to it, and Carlo Rovelli will tell him this, tell you this himself, he will tell you himself he doesn't want to be an idealist. Basically, interpretations of quantum mechanics run to, to two poles. And there's, this is just a generalization, but this is the God's honest truth. They either lean towards idealism, the real world isn't there, or they lean towards realism, the real world is there. On the, on the one pole of realism, you have the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics. It's total junk. It's totally idiotic. Now, somebody, some, some atheist, some dumbass atheist who thinks they're smarter than they are is laughing right now going, Sean Carroll holds to it. Ha <laughs> ha. How can he say it's junk? Probably Brenda. She'll probably go, how can he say it's junk? Sean Carroll holds to it. Sean Carroll is mistaken. Carlo Rovelli will be the first person to tell you that. He won't tell that, him that to his face. Why? Because at this point, the idea that the real material world, to some degree, I didn't say doesn't exist at all, to some degree doesn't exist, is still controversial. It shouldn't be. Why? It was obvious in the 20s. It was obvious in the 20s. Did I stutter? No. Should have been obvious to all of them in the 20s. They didn't want to grapple with the implications. Why? Because they're eliminated materialists. They are dogmatically attached to eliminated materialism. For them, there's an excuse. Why? It's what they're raised in. Just the facts, empiricism, just the facts, empiricism, just the facts. It took the scientists to break free. And that was actually two scientists have broken free. Carlo Rovelli and Bernardo Castro. Bernardo Castro was trained as a scientist. Don't play, let's look at his credentials, stupid games. Grow up or go home. Let's look at your credentials. You're a YouTuber. I'm not talking to anyone specific. I just know how atheists think. Let's look at his credentials. Yeah, look at his credentials. He was trained, in, in, he was on the staff at CERN. And he's, he knows his stuff better than anybody listening to me. If he were to debate with Matt Dillahunty, the, the, the reigning philosopher king of the atheist community, Matt Dillahunty would not even be able to put a point on the board against him. I promise. I promise. MythVision was having trouble even understanding some of the stuff he said. That's not to put MythVision down. Why? It's really complicated, high-level stuff. If you think you understand it at the, le at the level where you can shut someone down on Twitter, you don't. <laughs> it's like, if you want to keep coming, Brenda, keep coming. It's like playing basketball with the fourth grader. I swear to God, it's like playing basketball with the fourth grader, Brenda. And <laughs> within three months, you'll recognize that, that you're embarrassing yourself. Why? Because you can't put a point up on the board against me. Why? Because you don't understand this stuff at all. Not well enough, not just not well enough to be a debate and bro clown. You don't understand it at all. And that's to any other person in the atheist community, I promise. Try me. Dare you. Ding my video. Say, you got this wrong and this wrong, Craig. I guarantee you, you either misunderstood or you're misrepresenting. You're either being dumb or dishonest. There's no other way to interpret this video, period. I might be getting a couple things wrong here and there, but anybody who knows what they're talking about will sign off of this video and say, yeah, this is mostly correct. They'll say it's 85% correct. You can't do what you do to IP. Oh, he's, he's so dumb because he got, he's, his interpretation of quantum mechanics is gibberish. Did you guys watch his videos? I guarantee you probably didn't. And no, they're not. They're mostly correct. 85% correct. A couple things here and there that I won't sign off on. Why? Because they're probably not true. Now, getting back to MythVision. So you asked him the correct question. That question, you get an A for that question. That's a really intelligent question. And it doesn't have a good answer yet. That's why his answer was weird. He starts talking about the veil of perception and, you know, it, his answer is heading in the direction where it will make sense. It doesn't quite make real coherent sense yet. Is that, does that make sense? <laughs> no. Okay, see? It doesn't quite make coherent sense yet, just as I said. It's, I repeat myself. You just repeated yourself. I understand that. <laughs> um, 
I don't know. Maybe I'll end this early. Should I wrap it up early? No, you're doing great, Craig. <laughs> I don't know. Um, 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 oh, 15 minutes. Maybe I'll make the video shorter. Maybe that's why nobody watches them because it's like too long. Um, so, good interview, McVision. Really good interview. Hey, yes, the guy's out of your league. You, you acknowledge that right, out, right from the start. He's out of Matt Dillahunty's league, guys. I swear to God, if you're an atheist, listen to me. I promise you this is true. If Matt Dillahunty were to debate Bernardo Castro, he would not be able to put a point on the board. I swear to God that's true. Not one. He's thoroughly grounded in his metaphysical idealist postulate. And it corresponds to the data to the best of its ability. Where there is empirically verifiable facts, he will tell you those empirically verifiable facts and how they correspond to his postulate. He will. He's done it. I've read two of his books. I've read three of his books. And I've listened to, I don't know, maybe 15 of his interviews at this point. This is a first-rate intellect, and he is to be taken seriously. He is on to something that is really big and really important and is going to dramatically impact, is going to revolutionize, I think, the way these conversations take place. Why? Because he's a philosopher. A philosopher. A philosopher is willing to have an open-ended conversation. Willing to have a conversation that isn't, you know, debate me bro clown conversation. Prove this, prove this, prove this. That's for idiots. That's not how we should be talking at all. The philosophical atheists, as I've said before, are the only ones going to be standing at the end of the day, guys. I promise. I promise. Those are the only ones going to be left standing. Why? Because they are capable of nuanced thought and they are trying to engage with this stuff at high levels. And they're capable of complex, nuanced thought. The rest of these guys, the, not, the, the underneathlings, the debate me bro clowns will either grow up or they'll go home. There's no other option on the table for them. Why? Because they're dumb. They're dumb. They're a pack of idiots. I'm not talking about your, uh, I say this a lot, so I don't want to repeat myself too much, but you got your top shelf atheists. Your Shannon Q, your Apologia, your Vice Rhino, and your Prophet of Zod. They're, I have no objections to any of their behavior. Their behavior is, as a rule, civilized and decent, and they're having real conversations. Underneath them, their audience are, for the most part, debate me bro clowns. There are a couple of really smart guys in those audience. Mind Onion, you know, comes to mind. He's a bright guy. There are a couple of bright guys in those audience that usually know who they are. Why? Because I've seen them, what they write about. I'm like, that person's smart and worth talking to. But as a rule, their audience are pack of idiots. Pack of imbeciles. And there's a lot of tension between this pack of idiots and the philosophical atheists. The philosophical atheists are going to be the only ones standing at the end of the day. Why? Because the, 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 the conflict is ideological in nature. The philosophical atheists are intelligent and have integrity and they are capable of nuanced thought. Thus, they are bringing nuanced thought to the table. The debate me bro clowns don't want them to do that. Why? Because you've got to grow up. You can't just go, well, religion is so dumb, you sky fairy is so stupid. That's what Brenda's still trying to do. Engage me as if all Christians are stupid. And she's not even listening to my videos. She's not even understanding the ideas. Why? Because she's already written me off as the stupid one. She's just got to figure out how to, figure, how to show me that I'm the stupid one. Even though she doesn't, hasn't understand a single word I've said in the video she listens. She doesn't understand. You haven't understand, understood clearly a single word that I've said in any of the three videos where you have been mocking me the entire time, laughing at me, for your misunderstandings and your misrepresentations. Think about how paradoxical that is, girl. Think about how honestly paradoxical that is. That's almost pathetic. Actually, actually oh my, why did you say almost, Greg? I don't know. That's totally pathetic. No, scratch that. It's not almost pathetic. It's totally pathetic. And you've been doing it the whole for two weeks. <laughs> I can't believe he thinks methodological naturalism isn't true. Dude, that is science. Go look at the video. Go look at her, her tweet about it. Didn't say anything in that particular video about methodological naturalism at all. Nothing. So what's she talking about? I don't know. She's your squad member. That's a lot of guys. There's a lot of those clowns out there. Once you get past the top shelf atheists and smart set atheists, go look if you don't believe me. Go look at the conversations. You should be ashamed at the level of discourse at the rest of those morons because they're idiots. She basically laughed at me telling me Tell, telling her, announcing to the world that I think methodological naturalism is false and nothing in the video that she was laughing about said anything about methodological naturalism at all. I promise. You explain that to me. 
you explain that to me, because my head exploded. I was like, she's either the dumbest person alive, or she's a total liar. Either way, I don't why. I don't, why am I bothering engaging with you? Honestly, Brenda, you're over. You're way out of your league. I can't make this any clearer. You're gonna have to humble yourself and go. Wait a minute. Maybe I'm not the smartest person in town. Yeah, maybe. Maybe you're as dumb as I'm telling you you are. You're smarter than your average debate me bro clown, which means I expect you to grow up. Why? Start bringing some nuanced thought. You don't know what Jungian metaphysics is at all. At all. You should have learned that in high school. You should have learned that in high school, Brenda. So I expect you to grow up. Or go home. I don't care what you do. But you aren't going to keep going, he's the dumbest person in town. He's saying all this outlandish, ludicrous stuff. <laughs> you aren't going to keep doing that. Why? Because you're exposing yourself as embarrassing ignoramus. <laughs> and you don't know it yet. I don't know that yet. I understand that. I, I don't think that's true, Craig. I understand you don't think it's true. The joke's on you. Why? Because it is true. Anybody do? Anybody knows what time it is, it's true. All right, so let's wrap this up in a pretty little package. Go watch the interview. Uh, you know, it's not that great of an interview, Myth Vision. I have Myth Vision, you should actually list, either read his books or listen to his interview on the one that I always tell people to listen to, Dr. Richard Brown. Because Dr. Richard Brown is a, is a philosophy of mind expert. He's a PhD in, I think, philosophy of mind, or I'm not sure what the PhD is in. I don't really care. I don't play those games. But he is totally credentialed and intelligent enough to understand, and he asked him all the right questions. Okay, so if you really want to understand his, his stuff better, that's the, that's the video I always post for people. It's pretty thorough. You get a really good idea of at least the fact that this guy knows to some degree what he's talking about. He can back it up with empirical facts. Bang, period. Bang, period. End of discussion. He only, he only half wrote two physics papers. How many physics papers did anybody listening to me write? Not that many, right? Yeah, okay. Shut up with the stupid credentials game. It's stupid. We're YouTubers, guys. Get a, get a clue. We are YouTubers, and we're on Twitter. And some of you are living out of, a, like, a van and barely have jobs. And you're talking about someone who's written ten books, doesn't have enough credentials to what? To have credible ideas on YouTube? <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> Seriously, think about what's been, I Maybe nobody knows what's being said out there. Man, all of you, grow up. <laughs> or go home, I don't care. I don't care which, one or the other. Those are your options. Though too bad, I don't want those options, Craig. I don't care. Those are the only options on the table. You're either going to become a philosophical atheist, which is gro a grown-up, <laughs> capable of, myth vision is kind of a philosophical atheist, capable of nuanced thought. He's a gentleman. I, I'm not dinging him on behavior at all. He, you know, he said, this is out of my pay grade. He willingly said that. And then he asked, uh, he asked a question that was straight out of Pine Creek Dugland. And the question, you know, Bernardo Castro chuckled at your question and played along. You said, like, if you were to steal man materialism, Dude, the materialism is so dead and over. I know you guys don't understand this yet. Just trust me. If you're, if you're struggling to understand that, I can spell it out clearly so that a, even the slowest amongst you can understand it. Eliminative materialism is dead and buried dumb. It was done in the 20s. It is to the great discredit of the scientific community that they didn't notice that 50 years ago. Why? It's really obvious. The re to some degree, the real material world is not there. It is and isn't there. Eliminative materialism of the type that most, athe most atheists hold to requires it to be their period, standalone ontology. And he started laughing because he recognized a long time ago, Bernardo Castle, that doesn't make any sense. It's not just the hard problem of consciousness. How does a conscious agent fit into that? So when you asked him if you were to steal man the opposition, he would kind of chuckle to himself. That's a, you know, that's a question out of, then you, no, that wasn't the Pine Creek question you asked him. You basically asked him a question like, if it were shown to you tomorrow that you were wrong, would you accept that you were wrong? What those like, Pine Creek Doug, I have a letter here. It says, God, it's from God. It says, I don't exist. <laughs> will, you, will you now stop making apologetics videos because it's, I mean, it's that type of like, if it were proved to you tomorrow that you're wrong, would you accept that you're wrong? It's one of those type of questions. It's not your fault. Stop listening to Pine Creek Duck. Why? He's deeply misleading. <laughs> he's misleading. That's why. You know, he, he's going to have to grow up or go home too. <laughs> I swear to God he will. 
I swear to God he will. Why? Because you can't just do this to gotcha people. Even intelligent. He's way more intelligent than your average atheist. Way more. He's more intelligent than Brenda. Brenda's the cutoff. Everyone who's, who's dumber than Brenda is dumb as a post. Everyone above her in intelligence is basically the smart set. The smart set are all going to have to become philosophical atheists. No, there's no exceptions. Why? Because they're going to be shamed into doing it. Because the philosophical atheists are capable of nuanced thought. Everybody below Brenda is not capable of the nuanced thought. She's capable of nuanced thought. She's somewhat intelligent to some degree. She can follow a string of Jeffrey Williams tweets. That's pretty high level right there. I swear to God it is. That sounds weird, but it's true. When he writes a tweet on quantum mechanics, he knows what he's talking about. Okay, she, could, she couldn't write a tweet on quantum mechanics. It'd be total in, in, imbecile language. Wouldn't make any sense. His makes clear and cogent sense. He understands quantum mechanics really well. She understood what he was saying. That's pretty intelligent right there. So she's smarter than your average atheist. I'll give her that. But that ain't saying a lot. Why? Because they're a pack of idiots. They're a pack of idiots, guys. I swear to God I'm telling the truth. They're idiots. Idiots. So there's only two options. You know, I'll go over this again. Like everything I do, I'll say it time and time again until it gets it through your thick skulls. It's not my fault I keep repeating myself. It's your fault. Why? Because you guys aren't getting it. The memo is out. Nuanced thought is the only game in town. If you, don't, if you get that memo later rather than sooner, the joke will be on you. Why? Because, you know, you want to get ahead of the curve, guys. It's coming. Accountability is coming. All of these big debates, all of these Twitter feeds, they all take place in public. Did you miss that? Or I don't understand the significance, right? Oh, you don't understand. You will. Why? Because if you win a debate by anything other than the quality of your argument and the argumentation alone, you might as well not have won it. Why? Because I can bring that debate up five months from now and say, look, look at how little he understands about the topic. I can do it for rationality rules today. I've seen his video on philosophy of mind. It's a joke. I promise you that's true. It's a joke. It's embarrassing. They go, go watch. I think they did an analysis on... Adherent to Apologetics channel and Zach's channel. They basically didn't even know what to make of it. Why? Because it was so... He doesn't understand the topic at all. Okay, so he made that four years ago. I would expect him to course correct. I'm not saying he's a moron for not understanding it four years ago. But that level of, you know, don't understand philosophy of mind at all won't work anymore. Why? Because people are starting to engage with this stuff in ways that are a lot more intelligent and nuanced. And if you don't start getting up to speed with them, you're going to be the dumb one. Period. you got to either grow up or go home. Why? Because there are atheists out there that are capable of nuanced thought. And if the rest of you aren't starting to use nuanced thought, they're going to make you all look like idiots. Why? Because even if you're smart enough, if you're smart enough to be capable of nuanced thought, you're going to be expected to start applying that nuanced thought to this space and these conversations. There's no room for a debate me bro clown. You shouldn't be having these conversations to shut somebody down on Twitter. Oh, I wrecked you. That's childish. <laughs> it's childish. You didn't know that? Yeah. No, I didn't know that, Craig. I thought I was kicking ass. Yeah, well, okay. You might have been technically kicking ass, but nobody with any credibility or intelligence cares. <laughs> Put it this way. Carlo Rovelli, the greatest physicist of all time, wouldn't think you're kicking ass, wouldn't even bother to watch your engagement. The engagement is that ridiculous. It's a joke. It's like little, it's like fourth graders. Okay, you know, some of these people are engaging here not like fourth graders. That's the point. And you're competing with them. I, I don't know. I don't want to compete with them. Too bad. Why? Because they're here. <laughs> you are competing with them. So, I think that was all clear. If it wasn't, you know, screw it. Another video coming in. Another video coming in a couple days. So, there you have it, kids. That is all for now. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Amen.